Hi guys, so today on the Shed Sesh, we start our French cleat system. So, a French cleat system, or a French cleat wall, uh, essentially, it's this. You've got, uh, you've got something on the wall with a, uh, a 45, and you've got, you know, th this would hold tools and, and that type of thing, mounted to the wall. There we go. She's, uh, she's not gonna fall off. So that's the whole idea here. There we go. And um, it makes it, makes it modular. You're able to uh, move it around yeah, as you wish. You can make, you can make different, uh, different holders for different tools. Um, and you can move it around all over the joint. I've only done this section at, at this point. Uh, I figured I'd, uh, I'd stop here uh, for the, the sake of the video. Uh, I've still got to get, get around the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the shed. We'll get into the video, just showing you how, how I've put it together. All right, so here we get in and we start taking all the, uh, all the tools and all the hooks out of the, uh, the plywood panels that I had up for years. Um, it was quite a uh, quite an effort. But finally got there, and then we get uh, we get stuck into all I did here was just patch up the holes. Um, didn't go into too much effort, but it's just a bit of plaster filler. Um, patched it up, fixed up some gaps, sanded it down, and uh, made sure it was ready to go. So, uh, and uh, right about now, uh, I painted it, but. Uh, forgot to film it. Okay, so what I started off with was a, uh, a laser line, a laser level, and I've, um, I've set a line right the way around where I want the, uh, want the cleats to, uh, to, to go. Uh, and that, and obviously, the line obviously doesn't need to be right on where a cleat is, but it's a measurement mark from where you can go above and below. What I do want to do is cover up this join here between the two the two panels. So the first cleat I put on will be right across that. It is a bit close to these, but at least it'll clean up the uh, clean up the join, and then I'll, uh, I'll work out from there where I want my uh, my cleats going up, and I'll just get a, a measuring block. Uh, first, I'll uh, I'll sort of brad nail them in uh, with the the air nailer. Uh, just to get them in the right spot. Then I'll um, then I'll start screwing them in. Now I do have sort of battens behind here, sort of about one there, one there, and one there. So yeah, there'll definitely be screws in there. And given that it's plywood, I'll uh, I'll be able to put in a, another couple of screws, you know, here and there just to uh, keep it keep it nice and strong. But. Here's hope it looks good. So first things first, we're gonna set the saw up to uh, to cut the cleats. Uh, I've, I've just got these um, what are they, 19 by 42 mil pine strips from, from Bunnings. Um, they're already, you know, finished pretty much. They just need a, uh, they just need the, the cleat then put on them and they should work out. Uh, and they're rel relatively cheap, they're about four bucks each. I think uh, pine at the moment, you know, getting pretty hard to get. So we'll, uh, we'll chuck a, uh, a 45 on, on a bunch of these. Then I will um, trim them on the chop saw. You know, we'll be able to pin them up and, and see how they look. So uh, got the 45 on there. One thing to note, uh, because I've you know this was a, a set size, 
I have left a little tiny uh, bevel on the on the top of the um, the 45. You know, they'll, they'll just help to uh, to not chip and, and splinter as you as you're using it. Uh, but if you were you know cutting say a 100 mil length of pine in half, you know with a 45, you'd end up with a couple of sharp edges. Just run it through again. You know, from there to there and just lop off the uh, off the sharp edges. Okay guys, so <clears throat> we've got the first roll on. Uh, that should be pretty level. I used the laser and the spirit level. Okay, so uh, pretty straightforward here. Once you get the first one on and it's plumb and level, um, you just use spacers and you space them up. You, you do see I use the, the spirit level there because uh, <laughs> the the shed itself is a little crooked, so as I'm putting them on, they looked crooked, crooked but uh, they were actually straight. The, the shed itself is a little bit crooked. It's on a bit of a downward slope to the left, but um, yeah, everything's 100% level and ready for uh, the uh, the cleat system or caddies to go on. Okay, so up to this point, we've uh, we've only just nail gun the uh, them on. So right now, I'm uh, I'm going through and just pre-drilling and uh, sort of and uh, countersinking the holes, and then uh, we come back with the uh, with the screws. So they're long enough to go through the cleat, through the ply, and into the stud behind to uh, to get the the maximum amount of strength. I did use a, uh, a spacer there just in case there was any bowing to the boards. So there you go. So uh, that is how you put up a, uh, a French cleat system. Uh, there are, you know, you can search the, search the YouTube and the web for specific, you know, how to do it. There's many, many different ways of doing it. Um, in essence, it's those, those 45 uh, degree slats. Um, you can, you know, as I said, this, this is about sort of 45 mil thereabouts. You can use 100 mil board. Uh, generally, if you've got, uh, say you're mounting to plasterboard, you can uh, use a bigger board and then in the studs, you drill a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of holes. I'll put a, a picture up here of one of those. Um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of people that'll do this, this type of system and they'll literally only leave just enough to be able to uh, put a, um, you know, put the mating, the mating board in, so you've got a little more granularity on on where you want to put stuff and that type of thing. Uh, I've tried to go a uh, a mix of um, cost with usability. Uh, I do have them at 150 mil, or it's about six inches uh, apart from uh, say top to top or bottom to bottom. So I know that you know if I make any uh, any jigs um, or anything to go on there. That uh, yeah, I've got 150 mil to play with, you know thereabouts. Um, if if I if you do make something that's shorter, uh, if it doesn't come down to the the next one here, it's gonna it's gonna try to you know sort of push in a bit. So what you do there is uh, you just put a, a bit of a straight spacer just behind the um, just at the bottom there, just keeps it up, yeah, and flush with the uh, flush with the wall. Uh, but, to be honest, I think with 150 mil, generally I won't need too many spaces on the back of the uh, the tool holders. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I've noticed there's about uh, there's about 95% of you that uh, watch my videos aren't subscribed. Uh, we're nearing 200 subs, and uh, it'd be good just to uh, push it over, get up there, and uh, you know we'll, we'll bring you some uh, bring you some more content as well. I promise I'll get better. There will be a, a follow-up video at some point to uh, you know where I finish this and I start getting 
all the junk that is now on that was on the walls um, and is now on the tables up on the uh, on the French cleats. Subscribe and uh, hit the bell notification so you get a uh, get a notification that that one's coming up. Follow the videos at the end of the screen there for uh, for more shed sesh stuff, uh, and we'll um, we'll see you next time. And uh, as always, love your work. Get in the shed. Okay, so if you don't know what a French cleat system is or a French cleat wall, it's a wall of, I don't know how to explain it.